The major parts of the model were sprayed, as you saw, with Tamiya acrylic paints, which are optimised for airbrushing. For the hand painting techniques, however, I'm going to use Vallejo's model colour range, which is absolutely perfect for hand painting, is very controllable and dries quickly. To create the lighter shade we need for the mapping technique, I'm going to start with model colour ivory, just a very small drop, and model colour desert yellow, again, small amount, mix those two together to get a pale version of the desert yellow, and added to this some of the model colour slow dry, which slows the drying time down and gives us a little bit more time to work with with these paints. And finally, some plain tap water to thin the paint slightly and makes it flow nicely and makes it more controllable. We should get a nice creamy consistency and we can swirl this around until we're happy with the material. Taking up a small amount of the pale mix, and we're going to work on the top edge of the armour plate here. And the key to this is less is more. Very, very small strokes with the paintbrush, keeping it very fine, tiny marks we're trying to make here. It's all about subtlety. We do not want to overdo this technique. If it's not enough, we can always come back and do it again that work in very small brush strokes and yes it is a very slow tedious technique sometimes the paint is almost translucent and just building it up with the lighter shade on and in the process of drying we can prepare the darker shade which is to simulate steel with a slight rust to it and for this I'm going to use German camouflage brown a little bit of the green and even a little bit of the previous colour to make a kind of greyish shade and again a little bit of the retardant and some plain tap water and the technique here is to follow the pattern of the pale scratches but slightly back in from it leaving a very fine lip of pale colour and again very very small brush strokes tiny movements little dashes and dots until the effect gradually builds up because you don't want to overdo this one otherwise it's going to look quite unrealistic. And here you can see the technique gradually building up. It's important to pause and have a look. Plus the fact because the paint is wet it just has a slight shine to it and that will change as it dries. So we need to sometimes stop, let the paint dry and see how the effect looks. You can make very fine small scratches around to suggest the crew's movements with their boots. This is an area of the tank that would have been walked over quite a lot, so this particular high point will be quite heavily worn and scraped. But other areas will be less extreme, so bear that in mind when you're doing this effect. The green camouflage colour would of course been applied, as we did, over the sand colour. And when the crew move around over the vehicle, the green will be the first colour to start peeling off and start wearing off. So to simulate that, we're just going to apply a mix of acrylic paints pretty close to the undercolour of the vehicle to suggest that the green has worn off. Again, small amounts of paint moving in on a logical area. Try and imagine where the green might peel off and rub off. Work your way round, creating a pattern of scratches and scrapes, constantly stopping to check your work. The key to this is keeping it random, constantly checking what we're doing, keeping it realistic, using tiny dots, tiny dashes, to simulate little scrapes and scratches on the high points like this rough piece of welding here would have been made up of little tiny peaks of metal and where the boots of the crew have moved over it we need to simulate the fact that that green has worn right off but then in the more protected areas of the paint like in this area next to this device here the green would have remained so we don't want to work the scratches into there because that's where the paint would have been shielded from the wear and tear of the crew's boots to simulate where the original sand colour has actually worn down to maybe the primer or even the bare metal of the tank, we're going to go back in and apply some dark scratches following the line that we did before, but coming round just to apply some steely coloured paint damage within the sand portion of the camouflage. And this gives some continuity and also a welcome bit of contrast in the whole thing. Putting in some scoring, very fine scratches, scrapes, dents, bruises in the paint to build up an effect that looks quite realistic.
For the darker scratches, I'm using model colour German Camouflage Brown, which is a great all-round colour and seems to work on pretty much anything. It's always handy to keep close to hand. As well as combat, tanks are used for all sorts of other duties, such as busting down buildings and driving through undergrowth, and the paint gets scratched and scraped as they pass through. So using a slightly thinner mix of the dark one we used earlier, we're going to apply some horizontal scrapes and scratches to the vehicle. We're doing this very subtly. You may not even see some of these until they dry, but it's an important part to build up the effect that we're trying to suggest that the vehicle has gone through some pretty hard times. Plus, we're going to be putting on some small rust streaks later, and rust doesn't just appear at random, it has to come from somewhere, so we're going to make some little dots which suggests some actual holes in the paint and from those holes we'll be streaking rust downwards later on. Thin paint is useful here because we only want a translucent effect and we want a thin scraping and scratching to appear on the side of the turret and also the sides of the vehicle and the front of the vehicle where it's moved through the environment. And now with most of the scratching in place we can put the final few little dings in ready for the next step. I'm using the German camouflage brown again just to make a few small scores and scratches in areas that would receive the most damage, in this case on the fender. And that's that step pretty much done.